Arc Survival Ascended could bring the improvements the community has dreamed of, and even upgrade what we already have. Wildcard has recently announced that Arc 2 will be delayed. To be honest, no one's surprised. Wildcard has a history of that. It's not a big deal, I'd rather wait and be delivered a good game than something that's bad, buggy and broken. With the delay of Arc 2, Wildcard have announced that they are going to release Arc Survival Ascended in late August of this year. Arc Survival Ascended, or ASA, is the Unreal Engine 5 upgrade that was revealed earlier this year. This does not come without controversy, however, as it comes at a cost. Jeremy tweeted that the UE5 upgrade will be free, but that is no longer true. The base game will be $50, which provides the island, non canon maps and SOTF. Personally, I think this price point for the base game is fair. Upgrading to UE5 is no easy task, and the developers deserve to be paid for their work. From what I can tell, the plan to just port Arc to UE5 is no longer what is happening. It seems as if it is being re recreated in the new engine. This would be a harder process, but will ultimately provide many fixes that we have been asking for. One issue that has been prominent is the cost of the DLC. $20 for Scorched, Aberration and Extinction, then a further $20 for Gen 1 and 2. Me and many of the community feels that this is disingenuous, and many people have already purchased these maps on one or more platforms. I think people who have already purchased these DLCs on a verifiable account should get at least half off, if not more. In the announcement post, it was said that ASA would come with new features. One of these features was dynamic water. The current water in Arc is relatively static, so an upgrade could be cool. But there's no details, so we are unable to fully know what it means. Does water move around like real life? Like the video on screen? Or does it just mean that some rivers will push in one direction? Will rain affect the water? Some clarification could be great. They also included interactive foliage, which is an amazing feature that really added to immersion in games that include it. Glad this is something they thought to add. It is then said that performance gains will be present, but as with the dynamic water statement, little detail has been provided. Will this be better for lower end systems? And if not, does this mean that people will have to upgrade just to play? And will people be able to increase their graphic settings due to this performance gain? Instance rendering is mentioned, which is a really good feature to add as being able to quickly render large bases will undoubtedly save people from running into turrets unexpectedly. But again, this begs the question of, what power will your system need for this to be useful? They told us that threaded server networking will be included, and while I'm not a server expert, this should make it so that there is less jank, such as rubber banding, and make missions that have been tedious due to the jank a better experience. Cross-platform multiplayer was announced, which is incredible to hear. The divide between platforms has been one of the stupidest things about gaming, so this is great. The unofficial server community will be even larger, as there is no longer the issue of seeing a cool Lark server just to discover you aren't on the right hardware. It allows for friends to play together, which has been one of the biggest parts of Arc for a lot of players. Alongside cross-plat multiplayer, cross-plat modding was also announced. This should be amazing, console has missed out on the amazing creations the community have developed. However, there are concerns surrounding the mod provider, Overwolf. I've heard that Overwolf contains spyware, but this isn't confirmed. I'm sure Wildcard will check this, and hopefully this won't be an issue. Some people are upset that modders will be able to set prices, but I think this is fine. A large amount won't, and those who do will likely not find their mod featured in most public servers. This can also be a great way to make a public and premium version of mods. An anti-cheat was mentioned, but they have not said if this will be any different to the current version. We can only hope that it is significantly improved, as the current state of hacking is awful, and makes official servers unplayable for most people. I really like the quality of life improvements they listed. The building update could make it easier for new players to create cool buildings. The minimap sounds cool and would be a great way for players to learn the terrain around them. I'm glad they are updating the third person perspective and that it won't just be third person, which was one of my main gripes with Arc 2. They have said they will introduce balance passes, which could help the game. But what does it mean? We have the same lack of information from earlier. They say mechs will be included, but what does that mean? Will mechs be nerfed? Buffed? Will they just be different? Examples of what we can expect would be nice, because right now, we can't even tell if it's a simple value change, like increasing and decreasing damage, or would it be something more specific, like adding a new feature. They announced a new paid expansion, which is really exciting. It is currently unclear as to when this is set. It can't be after Gen 2, since that will be Arc 2. It could be a prequel or something to link Stinction to Genesis. It could be something similar to Scorched Earth, where some of the story occurs there, but not all characters go there. 
Four new creatures are included, which feels quite small, but if they are good, unique creatures, like some of Gen 2's creatures, the Shadow Main with its abilities and taming method, this could make up for the lacking numbers. Personally, I would rather not get yet another variant creature set. It has been way overused considering we have now Aberration, Gen 1 and Gen 2 variants. The past two official maps have been a bit of a letdown, with Gen 1 having weird features such as no build zones, weird difficulty ratings and more. Gen 2 has three biomes with it feeling bad to explore without a tech suit. I just hope they learn from their mistakes. Arc ASA will not continue split screen, which will be sad to a few players who enjoyed the game this way, but it's not particularly surprising. Primplus is no longer supported considering it hasn't been updated for a while, not surprising. Procedural Den was cool, but I don't think anyone used it. It would have been cool had they expanded upon it, but Dev made and community maps are way better. I don't really care about these features, they weren't a massive part of the game. That's about it. Unfortunately, RKSC servers will shut down when ASA releases. I think this should have been delayed until quarter one of 2024, but honestly I'm not surprised. Wildcard and Snail Games want people to pay for ASA. Hopefully they can prevent cheaters which would make official way better, but who knows. I now want to talk about my ideas for ASA, seeing as there is a bit of time before ASA is released so devs can still implement features. They've already said they will be implementing balance changes, so I hope instead of just changing numbers, they actually add useful features. I'd rather not just get a nerf or a buff to something. Let's take the Managama. Instead of limiting the amount of jumps and glides it could do, it would have been way better to make it do as much as it wants if the player could time it perfectly. Maybe not the best example, but think of how better creatures who were nerfed could be if it wasn't just a decrease of stats. They are currently porting the maps over and releasing them in stages. Whilst they have said nothing on making changes to older maps, I really hope they consider it. Maps like the Island and Scorched Earth were good back when they were released, but with the newer maps, they feel quite outdated. Some TLC would make them more viable, and that would just be great. And this isn't specifically about the maps, but there has been an issue where the creatures have really bad levels on the canon maps, so I really hope this just gets changed. Back when Scorched Earth was being released, there was talk about what it meant for the players. Questions like being able to transfer between the island and Scorched, fairness on those who didn't buy the DLCs when they now had to face creatures and items they had no access to. This is now less of a concern as it's already done and there's no item or creature that cannot be gotten on a free DLC. However, for those who do not have space for all the maps or simply do not want to play with certain items, this is an issue. There is also a problem of mega tribes who are currently free to dominate multiple servers there are solutions to this, preventing mega tribes dominating or just simply managing them. My first idea is creating map clusters with 1-4 to four of each map, allowing for a large amount of players but also making it so massive tribes are contained to their own clusters. Idea 2 is allowing for character transfers but not creature art items. This would make it so people who work hard to make their characters but suddenly have come across massive tribes or cheaters could move but prevent these tribes with massive amounts of people fighting new players who are setting up elsewhere. This system can work inside of the other ideas. My third idea is the weirdest. It's to make map clusters, but instead of having all the maps in a cluster, having specific groups, for example, the ones on screen now, this would mean that maps with similar themes and content could be transferred between, making it so those who do not want to fight certain aspects of the game can choose their appropriate cluster. I've just showed like a quickly made group and all the maps could be parts of different clusters. This would be a weird thing to implement but it could make it more interesting. In Ark Survival Evolved, there is the ability to change features such as loot drop, creature damage, resistance and more. But this is limited to those with specific knowledge of the code, or even external programs provided by sources who are not wildcard. I suggest that either an internal tool or a dev made external tool be provided. I think that more customization is amazing, such as the ability to buff and nerf specifics, such as individual weapon damage to certain creatures, uh, let's say the assault rifle to Argentavis. This could make for some much wanted change for those who do not like the current balancing. Arc ASA has the potential to simply be a remake of the Arc we know, with bugs and a large list of requested features. 
but it could also read new arc, reintroducing a large amount of players with new features and a brand new coat of paint. If you have any ideas for ASA, I'd love to hit them down in the comments. Thank you for watching.